Uh, welcome to the sixth episode of Futurecast. I have a very interesting guest today, uh, Catherine, the founder of Gecko. Um, we're going to talk a lot about future of work, mm -hmm. what's going on with uh, science and technology, innovation, yeah. and all the things related to people yes. side of business. Uh, we tend to spend a lot of time talking about technology, but mm -hmm. I think a lot of people forget that people make technology happen. They do. So we're going to chat about that. Mm -hmm. So Catherine, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. You are listening to the Futurecast. So maybe we'll start from the beginning and yeah. just um, jump right in. Tell okay. us a little bit about what is Gecko. What do you guys do? Okay. And then, uh, you know, what made you get to where you are today? Absolutely. So um, Gecko is a people experience agency. Um, so we focus on um, talent that work within the STEAM field. So science, technology, engineering, arts and, and maths. Um, so it's that kind of whole innovation space and we work, you know, not only attracting the right talent, but also helping our clients retain them as well. So, mm. you know, that whole people experience really just holding right. on there. But we have a real focus on diversity and inclusion, which is really at the core of core of the business. Right. So why, why this? Why do you do this? Um, so I've been in Iceland now for five years and, you know, I moved here from London um, and, you know, wasn't 100% sure what I was going to do when I got here and, you know, fell into recruitment, which I have a, you know, a, a, a long standing career in human resources and, and recruitment, etc. Um, but I really saw a gap in the market for, you know, a new agency that focused not only on the on the recruitment and, and bringing in the great talent, but you know, really looking at, um, you know, the bigger picture and how we build a great and very positive people experience. So, you know, we attract people, we empower them, and then we progress them. So how are we doing that? And, you know, having a very positive brand image, both externally and externally. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So, um, you know, this is uh, close to what I do, which is mm -hmm. working with founders, yeah. startups, innovation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, your clients are within a lot of different companies. Yeah. Um, Tell me a little bit about the first uh, year you were yeah. doing this in Iceland uh -huh. to what it is today, because yeah. that's always a good uh, context for people to understand. Yeah, absolutely. So I moved here in 2016 and then started working for a company called Tech Hire. So we were very technical, um, sort of uh, talent focused, you know, mm -hmm. just putting people into jobs and and um, and then when kind you of said technical, you're talking about mostly software engineering, yeah, software engineering, project managers, product owners, you know, mm -hmm. that whole sort of you know uh, software development mm -hmm. um, focus there um, and so you know for the first year you know even just sort of finding a job here was a little bit challenging because it's a very different market to the UK mm -hmm. for example so yep. you know I really um, by sort of you know going into an agency with recruitment it really got me to sort of understand exactly how Icelandic market works how companies work here and um, you know, sort of build that very solid network. But, you know, how things have changed now, you know, even in the five years that I've been here, there's a much bigger reception um, towards, you know, really finding the right talent and using an agency. You know, a lot of people often ask me, how do you have a recruitment agency or, you know, a hiring, hiring agency in, in Iceland when everybody knows each other, they're just one step away from each other. Um, and that's actually the point, you know, all of the good talent, um, especially there's a very low um, unemployment rate within the technology or innovation space so all of the good talent are in good jobs they don't want to be applying for a job they don't no. want to be like getting their CV out there and saying hey you know I'm open to have a look because they don't know who's in control of that so actually by using a mediator then mm -hmm. they have a lot more control a lot more confidentiality and so there's been a big change really in the last five years as to how people use agencies so right. uh, in terms of um, you know uh, immigration is a big mm -hmm. uh, uh, close to my heart yes, uh, because I, I've been an immigrant mm -hmm. all my life almost yes. and uh, I've always um, felt that uh, one of the big challenges about an immigrant is that it's not that people don't want you to be here mm -hmm. it's just that you know networks are built yep. based on familiarity yeah. people that they've grown up with mm -hmm. and this was something very new for me when I came to Same. Iceland luckily I had a good network mm -hmm. because I started working for a bank. Yes. You know, that kind of opened up the it door. Helps. But that's not really the the same no. for somebody who comes in no. because they're joining a, a technical company or 
exactly. any job in Iceland. Can you walk us through yeah. that part? Because I think that is what is interesting now because there's lots of people interested to be in Iceland. Absolutely. They want to come and work here. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of trying to get a first view. Absolutely. You know, what is it? You know, how should it be? Absolutely. So, you know, the first thing I discovered being, you know, a foreign expert in Iceland with all of this, you know, experience that you can bring bring to, you know, the community was having a good CV is just not enough. Yeah. You know, you have to get out there and knock on doors and, you know, really present yourself as, as a person. And, you know, what what are you? What are your core values and what do you want to achieve? And by doing that, you have to get out there and build your network. It's mm -hmm. the only way really to sort of, you know, get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. And if you're not confident, you know, not everybody has the opportunity to do that themselves. They either don't know where to start or what, what have you. And, um, and so that's a Again, where we sort of you know focus we help people make those connections and help expand their networks and take coffee meetings and all of those things and that's really really important if you're you know you don't if you come here with with no connections you've got to find a way of doing it right, <laughs> um, right, that's right. absolutely like the number one the number one rule right mm -hmm. I mean uh, we were before we started this interview we were mm -hmm. chatting a little bit about Startup Iceland yes. and um, the whole idea for me to launch that initiative mm -hmm. was to help founders build that network. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because uh, although you might be an Icelander starting a startup, mm -hmm. the network that you need to build your company might not yeah. be in Iceland. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? You need to get some people from outside to come mm -hmm. in and give some ideas and maybe even somebody inside you've never got to meet. Yeah. And uh, this was a revelation for me in 2010 because I looked around and I said, why isn't anybody doing this? Yeah, exactly. And, and I said, okay, if nobody's doing it, I I'm should just do it. Do it you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and sure enough, you know, eight years in, and um, it has become a fantastic networking Absolutely. Uh, place. Mm -hmm. And it also allows for many people to connect. And now we have had exactly. a lot of people come in for mm -hmm. the event. and. Uh, you know, the COVID has put a little bit of a dampener yeah. on that because uh, be a lot back. of people have been reaching out to me saying, mm -hmm. can we come, can mm -hmm. we participate? And I said, well, if you, ca if you cannot meet, we're not going to do the event. No. You know, we're not going to do an online event no. because it's not the same thing. Agreed. So we are waiting on that. So what are the other ch networking things that helped you? you know, yeah, kind of build this out. Absolutely. I mean, you know, when I first came to Iceland, there was the conferences and, you know, Startup Iceland was one that I, you know, I went to. In fact, I think within my first week of start, starting at my old job, I, you know, went to the HR, the big HR conference that's here and connected with people and, you know, really had no idea what I was doing. But, um, you know, I, the people that I connected with on that, on that day are still within my network. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the advice is really just to get out to conferences, which hopefully will come back. But, you know, they, they they have been replaced with some good um, networks. You know, one of the things that actually we've we've done um, during COVID times is actually launch um, FKA New Icelanders, which mm -hmm. is part of the you know FKA Women's Organization Group, and mm -hmm. so we're you know a part of that. You know, and, and running some online events to be able to help people connect during these times. So mm -hmm. there are other options. It's absolutely not the same as being face to face to somebody and having that you know that that human side mm -hmm. and and you know that's something that you know I don't think we'll ever lose we're gonna go you know talk a little bit more about the future of work and all of those things and how AI is going to probably change or potentially try and change a lot of things but right. we're never going to lose that human act um, yeah. you know so, that human um, side you know let's let's talk about that it's a good segue mm -hmm. and obviously uh, I spend a lot of time thinking about the future because yeah. that's what I do mm -hmm. and one of the things that everybody is thinking about is what what will work look like yeah. you know what will be what will we be doing yeah. if machines and automation are going to take mm -hmm. up i don't know 50 60% of what we do yeah. so what would we be doing otherwise what do you think yeah, I mean, it's a big question <laughs> because, you know, there is a lot of scope around, you know, AI and, the, you know, jobs are going to be replaced by, by automation. It's, it's a fact. However, you know, even in my 20 year, 20 odd years of, of uh, you know, careers, new, new jobs are constantly being created. You know, even this time, you know, five years ago, many of the jobs that we're working to, to hire into now didn't exist. So right. there's always new opportunities and new jobs coming through. Um, so the future of work is just for companies to be able to, you know, keep up with those trends. Look right. at what, you know, marketing jobs 20 years ago, 10 years ago, were completely different to how they are now with all the digital content and everything else that goes on. Mm -hmm. You know, software development jobs constantly change from year to year, dependent on the new 
mm -hmm. the new um, technology that comes out, etc. So there's, it's just about companies keeping up, keeping up with the future, and mm -hmm. really, you know, looking and and teaching that, you know, giving people the opportunity to grow within the roles, so right. that so that they're ready to. You know, move people into into the right talent. I, I I've thought uh, quite a bit about this, and mm -hmm. one of my opinions is that you know, I don't think um, companies have taken a very pragmatic approach to ask the question: yeah. What are all the things machines should do? Yeah. What are all the things should people Such should do? Such a good point. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. if you, if you basically go to those first principles yeah. thinking and ask that question and yeah. say. Machines are good at doing certain things. Absolutely. We should let machines do that because they're very good at it. Mm -hmm. And let's figure out what all the things that people should do exactly. and let's hire people to do that. Uh, right? Absolutely. I think if we if we kind of find that, um, should I say, sweet spot, yeah. I think this question will become moot, right? Yeah. Because we know for a fact that um, we are probably maybe about, I don't know, three to five decades away mm -hmm. from like true AI, yeah. and what I mean by true AI is that uh, that it can hypothesize, mm -hmm. it can project, it can create, and it can solve its own yeah. problems. It can force its own questions and mm -hmm. solve its own problems. Not there yet. Exactly. And and I think the human ingenuity to actually make plans, connect the dots, yeah. do things that uh, actually is contextualized, mm -hmm. is something that machines are not very good at doing. No. Even uh, you know the Google's new AI machine, which I don't know how many million processors mm -hmm. going through it, yeah. can identify a cat. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, after going through millions and millions of simulations and looking at mm -hmm. millions of pictures, whereas a four-year-old does it yeah. instantaneously after looking at a cat once. Yes, right? absolutely. So, so th that, a, that's that, that not kind of leap yet. hasn't happened yet. No. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying it won't happen. Yeah. I just think that it is going to happen. Um, I mean, the, the, the future of work post-COVID. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Because the, yes, the interesting aspect today is that the hiring, say, a STEM expert, yes. mm -hmm. having them physically in Iceland. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And then all that is kind of thrown up in the air. Absolutely. How is it changing what you're doing? I, th I think, you know, at the, you know, when you look at everything, and especially over the last year and how companies have had to adapt to their workforce and their people and all of these things, what it always boils down to is that humans are humans and they have core values and they expect and they, you know, really want to, um, you know, they want to produce, but they want to feel valued at the same time. So companies, you know, even though we've gone extremely digital and we don't expect that to go away, you know, companies are really going to, you know, adapt to this to be able to provide more flexibility, which will open up the workforces to people that perhaps they wouldn't have considered before. But at the end of the day, they're really going to need to um, focus on what, what the people want, how mm -hmm. they feel valued, how they feel empowered. And that's that human side mm -hmm. that, you know, a machine can't do for you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you really need to dig into what your people want, what skills they're good at, how they can upskill, how you can utilize other uh, other parts of you know their knowledge and experience that perhaps you didn't know before. So there's a lot of digging that can, that, that can happen. So as we're drip feeding people back into the workplaces now, I think you know as, as leaders and, and, and you know managers, I think it's really important for people to really go back to that human aspect and, and look at what we've learned over this last year. Mm -hmm. So um, let's, let's jump a little bit into kind of like career development. Mm -hmm. So yeah. let's assume I'm a brand new graduate yes. or maybe I'm just a sophomore. I'm just okay. in my second year in a university. Yeah. So what kind of things that I should be thinking about and what yeah. should I be working towards uh, building as a career? You know? Absolutely. I mean, again, it depends on what, you know, what your focus points are. But, you know, there's a lot of learning that you can do outside of what you're doing. And, you know, when we're when there are sort of more junior roles out there that clients are looking for, they're looking for people that have done projects outside of their, you know, outside of their studies. So people that have, um, you know, their own personal projects going on or done some internships or, you know, they've got some experience to bring with them. Um, so, you know, that's always a good good place to start is right. just to, you know, be getting additional experience and mm -hmm. really kind of, you know, perhaps looking at the kind of area that you want to, because, you know, if you're doing sort of software engineering or what have you, it can be quite generalist. And, right. you know, the universities teach a lot of, you know, one particular subject and everybody comes up, but there's so much more you can do, do with right. that to stand out. And again, you know, be connecting, going to events, mm -hmm. building your network all the way through university. It's really sure. important. So, so you would uh, say that building a network is far more important than building a 
skill set because you can always learn yeah. the skill set. Yeah, completely. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know, because you can always figure out how to yeah. you know, write some code. Absolutely. Uh, but uh, building that kind of network that will allow you to yeah. do and learn those skill set is going to make a big difference. Yeah. And thanks for saying that because mm -hmm. it's one of the things that I always struggled with because I've said that uh, you know in Iceland you don't have to build a network because you always know somebody. Yeah. By the way, you just have to talk to your mom and dad and they'll know <laughs> yes. somebody and once that person knows you are talking to the CEO of a company that yeah. you want to talk to, but it doesn't come naturally. No. I think that's the that's the aspect. I think it's a real skill that can be focused on a lot more here. You mm -hmm. know, there's there can be, you know, bigger workshops on this and how we connect without, you know, you also don't want to come across as, as too eager or, you know, there's a balance and getting that balance right is really important. And yeah. we often see that actually from foreign experts wanting to be here is, you know, learning the culture, learning, you know, what's too much, what's not enough and just getting that balance right so that, you know, they get the opportunities presented right. to them. I mean, when uh, we did uh, Startup Iceland and we did this mentoring session, yeah. I literally had to go and drag yeah. founders in yes. and say, you know, Brad Feld, that guy is a VC. Yeah. He deploys a lot of mm -hmm. money and he meets a lot of founders. Mm -hmm. He can share his experience with you. Mm -hmm. And once he connects with you, he is in Iceland. Yeah. You know, you are the expert. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know anything about Iceland. So yeah. he can share really relate to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And if you write him an email after that, Guess what? He is going to respond. Exactly. You know, rather than reaching out to him Absolutely. cold, cold email. So, yeah. uh, this is um, you know, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough in terms mm -hmm. of trying to build your network. I mean, even today, I am eagerly collect people. Yeah. That is, when somebody Completely. wants to come and meet me, I'm always eager mm -hmm. to say, "Come on over." I, I got no agenda, but no. more than happy to exactly. grab a coffee and with you. And it is. It's all about that story sharing. We mm -hmm. all have something that we can you know, learn from each other. And just sitting down, having a coffee, and just sharing a story, you're going to learn something. You're going to build a connection. And you know, we, you know, as part of you know, what, what we do, we always, you know, when we're interviewing candidates or you know, building a new relationship with a client, it's like find that common ground. Find mm -hmm. it soon, early on in the conversation, because it takes off the, the stress from everybody. And then you'll just you'll find out so much information that you perhaps you didn't realize about this person. You know, sure. you can read as much as you want in the news or the or the media or, you know, all of these different avenues, but actually having that connection with somebody yeah. is something completely I mean, different. Um, I'm pretty excited about all these new mm -hmm. platforms that have come up yeah. post COVID like Clubhouse and others yeah. where you mm -hmm. can actually, you know, get to meet this person. Exactly. Maybe you don't have to really know who they are, mm -hmm. but when you share and hear them talk, you kind of understand what they're really about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to switch gears and, and jump into maybe the last uh, couple of months yeah. where uh, you you have been getting a lot of attention, we have. to say the <laughs> least. And, and um, I, um, you know, from, from my understanding and what has happened with uh, your interview in mm -hmm. Groove, um, I, I just wanted to give you a platform to just yeah. to to to, to you. give it from your <laughs> point of view because I Thanks. think you know there's there's lots of people saying lots of things mm -hmm. but end of the day um, yeah it'd be good to hear from you what 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 happened yeah so I mean we had Ruth reach out and say they were just really interested to come and talk to us because I'd heard we'd been doing some diversity and inclusion workshops and just you know we we're a, a company with four people four females in in a very male dominated industry three of us are immigrants and you know. What, what were we up to essentially so the focus you know was supposed to be more on the sort of diversity side and the workshops that we're doing and just you know that education piece but but what happened was um, you know they I, you know I obviously interviewed in English which you know, always causes a little yeah. bit of a, a rough 15 years in, I yeah. continue to speak in English, much to the chagrin of everybody in Iceland. <laughs> exactly. And I always apologize and I say, exactly. it's not that I don't want to speak Icelandic. I speak Icelandic. My dog understands me. Yes, exactly. And, and my five-year-old understands mm -hmm. me. And my five-year-old's response tells me that I'm not very good at it because yeah. she looks at <laughs> yes, me and says, Swana says the same. please speak in English. It's yeah. okay. You know? Same, same. So, I'm just 
you know, I exactly. basically say I, I speak it, but when I speak it, it'll probably take you 20 minutes to understand what I'm exactly. saying. Exactly. And you so, want to get the message across clearly. Yeah. And, you know, the whole point of the article and, and the news piece was, was that we were, you know, a diverse team and we're bringing diversity to Iceland and a lot of, you know, really helping, you know, Icelanders and foreign experts mm -hmm. find, find work here or, you know, doing some education pieces. So, but what, what came from this? And because um, the headline went out as, you know, we struggled to find work hence we had to launch a new company um, so then we started getting emails and messages from people well if you learnt the language then you would have no problem and all of these things so it started this whole like divisive side of people no you haven't really looked in you know I'm having lessons I have sure. lessons every week I pay for them privately I don't pay through my union because I'm self-employed and all of these things so you know I'm having I'm having lessons but I'm not proficient enough like you and um, and so it just created this diverse, you know, um, this division really within within the communities. And um, yeah, it was just really interesting because on one hand we had people saying, you know, learn the language and you'll have mm -hmm. no problems getting a job. And my point was, I haven't had a problem getting <laughs> a job. Um, but what we're trying to do is just create some diversity. And then on the other hand, you know, from this, it actually really, really showed so much positivity within the Icelandic business community. We had so many Icelanders within our network and outside of our network coming to us and just saying, hey, we welcome foreign experts like you. You know, we really welcome you. We want you to be here. And you don't have to learn the language. You bring so much more, you know, you're here, you're contributing to the economy, you're doing yeah. all of these other great things. Yeah. This isn't like the pinpoint uh, for us. You know, so it, it when really I, when showed I that side. When I put it side. in context, yeah. then it becomes a lot more real mm -hmm. uh, on just my own personal journey yeah since uh, 2010 mm -hmm. the companies that I've invested in or been yep. part of or built up and number of people have touched with it has probably created more than 250 million dollars in value amazing has created more than probably 500 plus jobs yeah, exactly just me alone it's amazing right? I'm sure there are plenty of other people who are doing plenty of other things like that. Of course, right? absolutely. And that's, that's the story of the immigrant side. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that it is um, under told. Nobody, nobody talks about that. Exactly. And um, my, my challenge has always been saying that that's really not the important aspect. Mm -hmm. You know, the fact that I'm immigrant is irrelevant. Yeah. What is important is the fact that am I contributing You're to contributing. the society? Exactly. Am I creating value? And mm -hmm. this is something that everybody wants to do and Absolutely. so on and so forth. And I think it comes naturally as an immigrant because you just have to work harder. Exactly. And what we have to also think about is as immigrants, are we responsible for keeping the Icelandic language alive? Oh, you know, are we? Absolutely. We want to be here. I don't know one foreign person that's come to Iceland that hasn't wanted to learn the language, that hasn't tried, doesn't pay for lessons. So but we're not responsible for keeping it alive. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to try and we're going to contribute, but we're also contributing in so many other ways. And yeah. we really, you know, uh, we I should mean, have uh, a lot I mean, more I'm, credit I'm, for I'm, that. I'm, really. I'm a, I'm a, immigrant but as uh, as I tell everybody I'm a card carrying Icelander yeah. now uh, yes know? exactly congratulations <laughs> so hopefully I and, will be and, soon and that was that was a that was a fun experience mm -hmm. on another day we'll talk about yes that. I remember I remember <laughs> the whole scenario uh, but mm -hmm. the maybe the suggestion from my side I've been thinking a lot about this mm -hmm. is that here's a startup idea yeah um, you know, build a three-month immersive course yeah. for everybody who comes in. Yeah. By the way, they don't have to learn Iceland in a grammatical way. They just, no. to, they just need to learn maybe, what, 30 commonly used phrases? Yes. Like repetition. Yeah. Do it in three months. Mm -hmm. By the way, once they get that right, they it's, can more yeah. or less go and you know, get get yeah. acclimatized with all the other exactly. things. We still don't expect them to be able to do an interview on national no, TV I, I this, in Iceland. I've, I've been, I've been, you know, I've been to classes. Mm -hmm. I've been to, I've been to, um, you know, um, tutors and yeah. whatnot. My um, startup mind always says that this is the wrong way to teach language. Yes. You know, this is the wrong way because yes. I really don't want to learn all the grammar. No. I just want to learn those 30 things yes. that I can just talk about <laughs> and just move on. I totally right? agree. So maybe there's an, there's an idea or an opportunity for I somebody to build agree. something around that. Yeah, um, definitely. With that, uh, you know, uh, again, I, I think what you're doing is amazing. You know, Thank bringing you. smart people in is, is an important aspect of... Uh, building this next generation mm -hmm. of companies out of Iceland. Thank you. Um, it, you know, to, to, to basically finally talk about the last aspect of mm -hmm. this interview. 
Um, I mean, we talk a lot about the future. Yeah. We talked about future of work. Of course. Um, so, so tell me what's in the horizon for Gecko. Yes. What are you guys thinking? What are you doing? In the yeah, next, uh... so, I mean, we're just about to go into year two, which is really exciting. And, um, you know, we've been building out our people services um, and, you know, really just kind of looking into what our clients need. And there's a lot of interest in this, as we said, people coming back post-COVID back into the into the physical work workplace. Um, so year two will be a real focus on just, you know, making sure that, that our clients are really attracting the right talent, but, you know, how are they holding on to them? How are we making this a very positive experience? Um, there's just a lot of opportunity in Iceland. You know, there's a lot of opportunity for companies to utilize contractors for project work. You know, there isn't a huge contractor market here, and there's definitely an opportunity um, mm -hmm. you know for for companies to be thinking in a, in a different mm -hmm. way here um, and yes yeah, so you know just this whole sort of people experience with the focus on just you know continuing to grow the network in the innovation space continuing to grow our client portfolio and you know we're on a fantastic journey and yes. it's been super fun in the last 12 months so uh, maybe final question yes what are maybe one or two things companies in Iceland could do yeah to make it a great place to work. Yeah, okay. Maybe one or two, you know, maybe. Absolutely, I mean, the biggest thing is, is to listen to your people, you know. You need to create champions within your workplace that, you know, are the, are the go-to people that come to you with the ideas and they connect you connect all the teams through a DNA network mm -hmm. you know they all talk and create this so go back to people being the core of the business right. you know it's all fantastic having a great product or a fantastic service but if the people aren't happy you know we have no we have no future so right. it's really important to to be thinking about that and um yeah so go back to basics with with the people and just really you know look at the different opportunities you know how can we learn from the last year how can yeah. we bring something a little bit different how can we be more inclusive because right. you know we do a lot of diversity work as i said and we've put a lot of people you know 70 percent of the hires that we've done are, are female which is awesome but it's not just okay to tick a box and say now we have a female on our team right. it's like right. okay so how are we actually making our workforce right. much more inclusive how right. are we changing the language we use the communication tools the, the working hours all of these things have to be you know looked at no, in order on, to on, make on, a very inclusive workforce yeah, on, on a more broader note mm -hmm. kind of kind of creating that environment where everybody has the voice yeah to be heard They're visible right exactly. visible and, and I, I've always felt that that is kind of like the true sign of leadership Absolutely. where you are able to give even your junior most hire absolutely the voice to say hey i think you're wrong mm -hmm. and this is why i think you're wrong about this mm -hmm. and being have that uh, that's kind your of mentorship an, there yeah, it's yeah, yeah. so important to be having that but nobody should be afraid to step forward and have a voice and feel visible um you know it's just you know at the core of of your people strategy right. you know giving people that visibility so. very good thanks yeah. again Thank uh, catherine so it was a lot of fun talking i wish we would uh, do more of this yes, in a much absolutely. more longer format absolutely. but uh, thanks for taking the time thank you for and, inviting uh, me it's yeah. been a pleasure very good and enjoy the wonderful february yes. uh, summer that i know you're having in iceland <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful thank you bella thank, thank you, you. <laughs> Thanks again. Uh, that was the sixth episode of FutureCast. And uh, if you like what you're seeing, subscribe. And, uh, you know, follow us. It'd be fun to see you engage with what we're talking about.